So we've talked about what is money, and we've talked about the nature of a bank loan, and how the bank lends not, you know, central bank notes, but credit issued by the bank for the purposes of lending. In other words, debts issued by the bank, IOUs issued by the bank, are what you borrow. Now you might think to yourself, what a wonderful racket. I mean, I get to, if I'm a banker, create IOUs and uh, collect interest on those IOUs. So maybe there's no limit. I mean, I can just create as much credit as I want, can I? And then, uh, boy, the money would just be just flowing in. Well, let's deal with that issue uh, point by point by starting with an economic observation. And that is the um, quantity theory of money. Effectively, the quantity theory of money says that if you hold constant all other factors, then if you increase the number of dollars of which your money supply is comprised, the effect will be to increase the prices of goods and services. Let's take a simple example, perhaps an oversimplified example. Let's say that the total number of dollars that make up your money supply is $100. And that $100 is the total amount of money spread out across all people, across your entire economy, throughout your entire country. And that with that $100, all goods and services are purchased. Now, they, they don't appear as $100 bills. They're broken down into pennies or maybe tenths of pennies or etc. But the total dollar value is $100. Of all those denominations, the total dollar value, $100. Now if you hold all other things constant and you double the number of dollars to $200, then in theory the price of all goods and services will double. So if a chocolate bar used to cost one penny when there was only $100 in circulation, then the chocolate bar will now cost two pennies when there are $200 in circulation. The bottom line is that it is true that if you double the supply of money, the effect, the effect of that change, not of other changes, but the effect of that change is to double the prices. Now the effect of that doubling won't be instant. It will probably take in the order of around six months for prices to rise uh, in, in respect of that rise in the amount of dollars. But it will happen over a course of months, you will find prices rising as the extra money flows out into the economy and becomes used by different people to buy goods and services. Now you might ask the question, well, if you double the number of dollars, isn't there more wealth? Isn't there more wealth in society because you've doubled the number of dollars? Well, the fact of the matter is that dollars are not the source of wealth. You can triple the number of dollars, quadruple, ten times the number of dollars. You will not change the amount of wealth in society. All you will have done is divide it up into a number of pieces, a greater number of pieces. Think of dollars like this. The goods and services available in your country for purchase with your country's money are like a big pie. And the number of dollars you have represents the number of slices into which that pie is divided. And so you might double the number of dollars, which is no different than doubling the number of slices into which that pie is, is divided. So if there are double the number of dollars, then each slice is half the size that it otherwise would have been. So if you multiply the number of dollars, say, by 10, so instead of having $100 in society, you have $1,000, well, all you're really saying is that each dollar represents one-tenth of what it used to represent. Each slice of the pie is one-tenth the size of what it used to be when there was only $100. You haven't increased the size of the pie. You've just cut it into a greater number of pieces. That's what money does. So in a country that has $100 as its total money supply, $1 
is 1% of the money supply. It is 1 one hundredth of the money supply. In a country with $1,000 as its total money supply, $1 is 1 one thousandth of the money supply. And that's what it represents, a share of the money supply. It doesn't represent a share of goods and services because the prices of goods and services vary from person to person. The value of goods and services differ from person to person according to their needs and wants and the timing of everything. It is not possible to know the value of the money supply, the value of the total money supply, in terms of goods and services. Whatever the current money supply could buy right now, if you doubled that money supply, each dollar would buy half as much as it otherwise could have bought right now. Simply changing the number of dollars in society does not make society wealthier, it does not make society poorer, all it does is represent that wealth by a greater or lesser number of pieces. That's all. It reminds me of a story from when I was a child. My sister had, I think it was, five one dollar bills that she had collected over time. I don't know if it was through allowance or gifts or what have you. She was quite young. And my father uh, needed, I believe it was um, a total of two dollars, but he only had a five dollar bill. And so he went to my sister and he went to exchange his five dollar bill for the five one dollar bills that she had. And uh, she began to cry to my mom and said, Daddy took five monies from me and he only gave me one monies, now I only have one monies. My sister was making the mistake. Effectively, she didn't realize it in these terms, but she was effectively making the mistake of believing that every piece of paper represented an equal portion of the money supply. There are a lot of people who believe that if you increase the number of dollars, you will increase the amount of wealth in society. Now this is like believing that if you took a length of licorice and you simply cut it into a greater number of pieces, you'd somehow have more licorice. It's the same kind of mistake my sister was making. She believed that if she had five pieces of paper, that she had five times more money than when she only had the one piece of paper that was marked with a five. You do not increase the wealth of society by changing the number of dollars. All that can change the wealth of society is productivity. Creating more goods of higher value, uh, lower price, uh, at a lower cost. In other words, making a greater number of better things available for people at a lower price. If changing the number of dollars in society doesn't change the wealth of society, what does it do? Well, let's look at the counterfeiter. What does the counterfeiter do? Why is counterfeiting illegal? The counterfeiter takes out paper and ink and a printing press or whatever his tools are and creates replicas of banknotes, central bank notes. Now when he does that, he's increasing the number of dollars that make up the country's money supply because he knows and everyone knows that if he's good at his work, these bills, these notes that he's passing around, will be seen as and treated like authentic notes, like notes that were issued by the central bank. So in effect, the better he is at his job, the more likely it is that his notes will be handed from person to person just like every other Bank of Canada note, Federal Reserve note, Bank of England note, etc. They will be treated for all intents and purposes as the same thing. No one will be the wiser. And that means that the counterfeiter has effectively increased the number of dollars, or in Britain, pounds, that make up his country's money supply. Well, so what, you might say? What's the problem with that? Why does that make it a crime? And a lot of people think it's a crime because, well, he never did anything in exchange for that money. That's the crime. It's a moral crime of that sort. You know, he's, he's wealthy without having worked for it. Well, no, that's not why counterfeiting is a crime. I mean, it's certainly not. It's, it is morally reprehensible. Uh, but, but it misses the real way in which this person gained wealth. In other words, it shows him gaining wealth, but it doesn't show the other side of the equation. When that counterfeiter creates wealth for himself, 
and increases the money supply, what does he do? He decreases the value of every dollar out there. He increases the money supply by one dollar, he decreases the value of every dollar, including the one he just printed. So let's give an example. If the counterfeiter in a society with only one hundred dollars making up the total money supply, if he prints off a number of replicas, say one hundred replicas, he will have made each dollar worth half of what it otherwise would have been worth. In other words, it will buy half of the goods and services that it otherwise would have bought. Each dollar has become devalued by 50%. Who gained? The counterfeiter. At whose expense? Everyone else's expense who had dollars in their pockets. So, you were walking around with one dollar in your pocket. It used to buy, you know, a can of pop and a chocolate bar, 50 cents for the pop, 50 cents for the chocolate bar. So the counterfeiter went out, printed up an extra hundred dollars and doubled the money supply. And now the dollar in your pocket only buys half of what it used to buy. Instead of being able to buy a can of pop and a chocolate bar, now you can only buy a can of pop or a chocolate bar. So the buying power of that dollar in your pocket has been halved. And who gained that half? The counterfeiter. Where did it go? It went into that money that he created. That's why counterfeiting is illegal. It's not simply illegal because he gains without working. It's that he gains at someone else's expense. Yours. In fact, everybody who holds dollars loses when a counterfeiter creates more dollars. Because the amount of wealth in society doesn't change, it just gets divided up differently. Think of it this way. Imagine you're playing Monopoly. You have $100, and the three other people playing with you have $100, including the banker, he only has $100. And um, at one point in the game, the banker says, you know what, I'm going to issue myself an extra $400. So now I'm going to have $500, and then each of the rest of you are going to have $100. Well, what has he done? He's just doubled the money supply. He's taken half of the value of your $100, half of the value of two other people's, hundred dollars. In, in terms of shares of the money supply, he now has five-eighths of the total money supply, whereas he used to only have one-quarter or two-eighths of the money supply. And where did he get that extra three-eighths? One-eighth from each one of you. He stole that value from you. He took it out of the value of your money. It's no different, in effect, than simply reaching over and taking half of the money in your pile. He could have done the exact same thing by reaching over and taking $50 out of each person's pile, leaving you and the other guy and the other guy, each with $50, and having in his pile $250. 100 of his own, plus 50 taken from each of the other three players. There's no difference. It's exactly what he's done. He's literally stolen money from you. Well, why did he do it this way? Why did he just print up money instead of just taking it out of, you know, out of out of the uh, stack in front of you? Well, because if he tried to take the money out from right in front of you, you probably would have fought back, wouldn't you? You probably would have slapped his hand. Or in the real world, if someone actually tried to steal money out of your vault in your house, you would have called the police and had them arrested. But you can't do that when it's a counterfeiter, can you? When it's a counterfeiter, he's stealing from you, and you have no way of knowing, A, when he's done it, B, where he's done it from, C, who he is, or anything else. He steals from you covertly by increasing the money supply. And you're powerless to catch him, at least immediately, unless you find out who it is that's increasing the money supply. It's a heinous act. Now the next question is, well, we know why counterfeiting is illegal. So if it's wrong to increase the money supply because it causes people to lose value out of the dollars that they own, if it's effectively a ripoff, if it's no different than the taking money right out of a person's wallet, is it right for anybody else to do it? Anybody other than a counterfeiter? Well, I think we'll deal with that in the next installment of Understanding Money and Banking.